Hey guys, it's Matthew here, and I'm going to be showing you how to make the transition from using Alice 2 to using Alice 3. So um, if you've been using Alice 2 for a while and kind of feel comfortable with it, what I'm going to do is show you how to quickly and easily make the transition from uh, what you know with Alice 2 to uh, be able to jump right into using Alice 3 because it, it's a lot, uh, it has a lot more functionality and it's a uh, the, the graphics are a lot more, um, they're, they're a lot nicer and uh, you, can, you can pretty much transfer all of your knowledge from Alice 2 to Alice 3 once you know uh, kind of the basics, the basic differences between the two. So um, let's get started. Um, on your Alice 2 screen you kind of have five, technically six, but five main parts of your screen. You have the 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 window, the screen, the view itself that looks into your world, the scene that you're creating. Um, you have this little Add Objects button, uh, which opens up the Objects uh, browser where you can add all of the, the characters, the objects like the bunny, um, goldfish, shark, trees, house, whatever you want to add. Um, so there's those two. You have the world, or I'm sorry, not the world, but you have the tree the object tree where it it's a tree because it kind of like uh, the the trunk the the base of the tree is the world and then um, built into the world is the camera the light the ground and any other objects you add like the bunny um, and then notice there's the plus key here uh, not to be redundant I'm gonna actually show you where that is in Alice uh, three, but if I click on that, you can see the the different parts of the bunny: the right leg, left leg, upper body, etc. And um, yeah, the, that that'll come in handy in a couple minutes. So this is the object tree. There's the details tab. Notice it says world's details right now. So um, if I click on the bunny, it switches and now says bunny details. And and what it is is it has all of the properties methods and functions for that that character or that object that I'm on right now. So this is where you uh, tell the bunny to move, to turn, to roll, say things, move to something. Um, and it's also where you can create your own methods um, for each character, character or for the world itself. Uh, and then finally the last couple things are the, uh, the methods tab and the events tab. So let's uh, switch over to Alice 3 and kind of see where some of these uh, things are. So I'm going to just switch over really fast and uh, when you first open up Alice, Alice 3, it just looks a lot different than if you've been using Alice 2 for a while. So if you've been using Alice 2, what's nice is they kind of gave you a way to bring it back to almost uh, almost to Alice, Alice 2 the way it looked. So what you do is you go up to the Window tab, go to Preferences, and then unselect this Emphasize Classes. So I'm going to just do that, and you can see that it kind of turns it back to uh, looking quite a lot more like uh, Alice 2. So once again, you go to Window, Preferences, and then unselect this uh, Emphasize Classes thing. So this is, this is the screen, kind of similar to Alice 2. Uh, you can see into it. You can see I've got a bunny. I've got the grass and the sky. And then below that, this is actually the object tree. What's cool is they collapsed it. They made it smaller so that they could stick more things on this side of the screen and give you more room for doing other stuff in the main, the main body of the screen. So if I click on this, you'll notice that I have this this ground, this camera, this bunny, and if I had more objects they'd be also be below here. Notice it doesn't say world, it says this. And in Alice 3, for, for some reason, they actually have like your main um, uh, world, your main scene, is just called this. And then uh, within that this, there will be the ground, the camera, the bunny, and like I was saying, other objects. And remember I, I showed you the, the plus icon next to the bunny in Alice 2. That's actually the arrow icon next to any object that has more moving parts and stuff. And notice uh, there's actually a lot more in Alice 2 than there or in Alice 3 than there was in Alice uh, Alice 2. 
and like it goes down to like shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers, and if I click on here, there's even more. Um, yeah, and so that's this is the object tree, and notice here it says procedures, functions, and properties. Now, functions and properties are the same as in Alice 2, but they actually renamed procedures. Uh, they renamed methods in Alice 2 as procedures in Alice 3. Uh, they were just trying to technically uh, define this as procedures because met, uh, in, in typical programming languages, methods could actually be procedures or functions, and they, they didn't want it to be ambiguous what they were talking about. So uh, they, they defined, they redefined the methods as procedures. Um, and then with these three, the procedures, functions, and properties, this will be whichever one I'm on. So right now I'm on this, I'm on the world, so it would be the procedures, functions, properties of the world. And if I click on that and then go to a different one, say say the camera, what happens is it switches to the camera's procedures, functions, and properties, and I can have it do certain things. So that's the, uh, the screen, the object tree, and the uh, details tab and then the the other things we want to know are the um, the methods uh, tab and then the events tab and uh, methods is kind of uh, like I said it, it's the procedures in Alice to 3 so that's actually this whole thing right here that's the the procedures tab and um, if I go back to say this what I can do is I see my first method and click edit and then it would be opened up here. Now the events tab, that's where you can uh, set up the computer to be, or Alice 3 to be interactive. Events are where you can say, okay, if I press the space key, I want the rabbit to walk one meter or things like that. And what I can do is I can actually, uh, it's, they don't have a specific place for it in Alice uh, 3 like they did in Alice 2, but if I go to this, click on this like, like I have right now, there's these five predetermined methods, and the middle one is this initialize event listeners. So if I click on that, that opens up this, this extra tab right here, this initialize event listeners, and that's actually where the events are stored, uh, similar to Alice 2, where, where they had the events tab. And if I, I, I added this, like by default, I'm gonna delete this. By default, all you have is this initial scene activated, my first method. So when you first open the scene, it runs my first method. Now, what I can do is I can add an extra one. I can add an additional one or two or three or however many, uh, event listeners I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this keyboard add key press listener. And this adds um, a, they call uh, these listeners in, um, in Alice 3 to try and make it more like Java. And what happens is this will tell the program to listen for when a certain key is pressed. Now what I'm going to do is I can make it a specific key but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say I don't want my program to begin until we've until we've pressed the A key or the well actually we'll, we'll say the spacebar key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to drag the if statement in here. Just set it to either true or false right now. It doesn't matter. I'm going to set it to true. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the my first method into this. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take this E is key, I don't know, and I'm going to drag that right there. Now, E is, um, notice right here it says E for all of these. E is whatever key you type. So what we're saying is whatever key you type, I want that to be the A key. So what this does is it says, I will not start the first method until I hear someone pressing the A key. And that's how you kind of set up things in Alice uh, 3, set up event uh, listeners. And um, with that, we've pretty much covered everything in Alice 3, like location-wise, where it is. 
Uh, the last thing is the add objects button for creating stuff like adding objects like the rabbit or fish or whatever into your scene. That's stored right here in the scene setup. So when you press that, it opens up your um, your uh, models gallery, which is actually very similar to Alice uh, 2. Um, similar enough where I don't need to explain where things are located. You can just click on objects, drag them onto the scene, click OK, and they're added just the same as they are in Alice 2. This is, this is actually just the same. Uh, one thing to note is actually the, the quad view has been removed. Instead of quad view, we have these different views that we can look at. So we can go to scene layout view. And that'll bring us back so that we have a better view of like what's going on here. Or you can go from the top, which is directly overhead. I'm going to move it so you can see. And then the side and the front. And so instead of the quad view, we have these, um, these several, several different viewports that we have to individually go to. And with that, you are pretty much set up where you should be able to uh, transition over from Alice 2. You should be able to transition and find where everything is. So with that, good luck. And I will be talking to you soon about Alice 3.1. Uh, have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.